This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to talk about piecewise functions. This is our third of three videos on this topic, piecewise functions. And for this particular video, we're going to take a look at advanced level problem. An advanced level problem. All right, and uh, this is an advanced level problem because there are not only three parts, part one, part two, part three, but uh, we do have a linear function. Here's a horizontal linear function. The first one was a diagonal linear function, and then this, of course, is a nonlinear function. So it's about as complicated as it gets. Uh, okay, uh, let's start by looking at our domain. Where is our domain split? It looks like there's a split at 2, so I'm going to draw this tiny little, uh, try to keep it light, at x equals 2. I'm going to draw this line here, try to draw it too dark. Okay, so that's at x equals 2, x equals 2. All right, so we've got a line there. Dashed line, it's not really part of the curve, but it's going to help us understand it. And we have another one at negative 1. There's another split here at negative 1, and that would be x equals negative 1. All right, so I'm going to draw this, you know, diagonal, I'm sorry, vertical line. And I'm going to try to make it light. All right. Now this will under, uh, help us understand this picture. You could see that our coordinate plane is now separated into three parts. There's the left part, there's the middle part, and there's the right part. And that corresponds with the three parts that I have here, because our domain is split into three pieces as well. All right, everything left of this x equals negative 1 line is going to behave like this diagonal line. So remember, this is y equals x. Normally, it would go through the origin and kind of go up one, right one, up one, right one. I don't want to draw that because I want to draw everything left of x equals negative 1. So if I were to imagine drawing that line, but just picking it up right here, so it's going to have this look. It starts right here. Oh, actually, you know, I wanted to do that in red to stay consistent with the website. So, uh, at mathguide.com. So, I'm going to start drawing down like this. Doing my best to do this freehand. Okay, so we've got this line going down. Notice how there's no equal sign. So, at this barrier, we're going to have no equal sign, or in other words, an open circle. All right, now let's go for the middle. The middle, actually, you know what? I'm going to save the middle to last because it's kind of the hardest to, to graph. Uh, let's try the rightmost section, which I'm going to do in green. Uh, all right, so this one's a horizontal line, y equals negative 1. So I'm going to graph that, everything from negative 1. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong section. This is the last one. Uh, everything that's greater than 2. So this greater than x equals 2, in other words, the right side. So it's going to be at negative 1. So it's going to have this shape right here. It's going to go off to the right. All right, again, there's no equal sign. So at our barrier, x equals 2, again, there's an open circle. All right, so I've got two of my three pieces graphed. Now comes the middle. Now the middle is a little bit harder to do. And the reason why it's harder to do is because it's a curve. It's a U. It's a parabola. If you know anything about parabolas, it's a U shape. Normally, the U shape does go through the origin, but it's been translated one unit up. So instead of the, the vertex being at the uh, origin, it's all, everything shifted up one unit. If you didn't know that, what I would do, of course, anytime I'm graphing, I would make a table, a table of values. And I would plug in some numbers, like, for instance, I'd like to know uh, when x is negative 1, when x is 0, when x is 1 and 2, I'd like to know where this curve is as far as a y value is concerned. So I would make this table to do that. So for every one of these core, uh, y, x values, our domain values, we have a corresponding range value or y value. So we're going to plug in our negative 1. So x squared, or negative 1 squared, is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's put, put in 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 plus 1, 1. Let's plug in 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's 
put in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1, 5. Now what I do, of course, is just plot these values, right? I would plot these on our plane. So negative 1, 2. So negative 1 up 2 would be over here. Uh, and I'm keeping this very light because I want to figure out where my open and closed circles are. But there is a little point here, a tiny little blue point. Uh, it may be open or closed at this point. We haven't decided. And here we're going to have 0, 1 right here. So 0, 1. There's going to be a 1, 2. 1 to the right, 2 up. And then there's going to be a 2, 5. 2 to the right, 5 up. Right there. All right, so you can see how, what this U shape is going to look like. Remember, we're only graphing this U shape between x is negative 1 and x is 2. So we're not going beyond it, we're not going below it, or I should say to the left of it or to the right of it, just in between these domain values. So the domain is just constrained between negative 1 and 2. So we would graph this. I'm going to try to do this as best I can freehand. So it's going to look something like that. It's going to have that shape. It's about as good as it gets right there with my graphing ability. And let's see, I've got equal, I've got a closed circle at negative 1. So there is, actually is going to be a closed circle there. Let's see, there's an equal sign at 2. There's x equals 2. So there will be a closed circle there. So it looks like my complete domain, all real values are defined according to this piecewise function. There's no gap in our domain. Uh, at least there's no gap in our, all our uh, x values, but uh, there are breaks, and, and that's where this part, these conditional statements kind of indicated where these breaks are occurring at negative 1 and at 2. That gives us an idea of what the curve looks like. All right, so that's it. So if you'd like to see more, you could always go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive uh, activities, uh, I should say interactive quizzes, activities, and our lessons. Take care.